våra kroppar finns miljarder bakterier. De flesta är helt ofarliga för människan. En av de här bakterierna heter Neisseria meningitidis och den bor i våra näsor. Men så ibland händer något mycket märkligt. Bakterien tar sig ut i blodet, in i hjärnan och dödar både sig själv och människan på bara några timmar. It can actually cross from our nose into our blood and then goes into our brain and causes something called meningitis. You can get the disease throughout the ages. However, the most common one are actually infants when they are very young and also people who live in crowded conditions like daycare centers and also in old folks home and these kind of places. Varför bakterien plötsligt går från ofarlig till livsfarlig är det ingen som kan förklara. Men biologen Edmund Lo är en av forskarna som försöker lösa mysteriet. We know how the bacteria cause the final disease. It causes meningitis. That is uh, not something novel and trivial anymore. However, that we still don't really fully understand why a relatively, well, not dangerous bacteria that lives inside your nose could actually suddenly turn so dangerous and can kill you within a couple of hours to half a day. And then by knowing the mechanism of how it turns from good to bad, we can perhaps find mechanism that we can actually block so to maintain the bacteria always good but not to the bad bacteria so that is one of our main goal so this is an uh, an old microscope that i actually got in an auction actually i got it last year att Edmund Lo skulle bli forskare och just biolog var ingen större överraskning varken för honom själv eller för omgivningen that is actually functioning actually sitt första mikroskop fick han redan som barn went to the garden to try to look for small to insects looking for plants and then I can put under the microscope and actually can see them in detail the legs of these insects and how do they live and the flowers the the basically the physical properties of these insects were fascinating Så småningom hamnar Edmund i norra Sverige där han studerar biomedicin vid Umeå universitet och det är där han börjar intressera sig för RNA, en kemisk släkting till DNA. Molekyler som kan vara ett viktigt steg på vägen i kampen mot hjärnhinneinflammation. The bacteria has to adapt very quickly or else they will be killed by our immune system. And one of these mechanisms that they can adapt and change very quickly is to produce these what we call small RNA. And when they produce these, these small RNAs have many effects and then they directly can actually control a lot of these mechanisms especially in protecting the bacteria. Nonstans gömt i arvsmassan finns svaret på frågan som Edmund och hans team söker. Varför bakterien som normalt lever fredligt i näsan plötsligt bygger en kapsel som skyddar den från kroppens immunförsvar? Det gäller alltså att studera bakterien noggrant för att identifiera vilket eller vilka RNA-molekyler som är inblandade i processen. Ett komplicerat, tidskrävande och dessutom farligt arbete eftersom bakterien är mycket smittsam. The gloves will never come back out into here because now the because he has handled with bacteria and so on already. Once we found our candidate, we would actually do the experiment in the lab. If you see here there are these like purple uh, solution bottles which contains vercon is disinfectant that you actually pour it onto the bacteria to make sure you kill the bacteria so these are a lot of precautions that we have once uh, the bacteria is grown we have found different conditions to stimulate these small RNAs we would actually first kill the bacteria and then we isolate the RNA from these bacteria and once the RNA is isolated we can then finally take our samples out from the lab to actually visualize to quantify and also to study the mechanism of these RNAs. I labbet försöker forskarna simulera den miljö som bakterien möter i näsan. 
Man undersöker hur olika variabler får olika typer av små RNA att reagera. En faktor man har tittat på är temperatur. The dotted lines here, the black one, uh, could be influenza or it could be cold uh, related illnesses. But if you see the meningitis cases, it peaks together with the influenza. You can imagine the bacteria is living inside our nose, so it goes through quite a lot of the physical uh, stress factors that we humans also go through as well. That we discover that an RNA sends small temperature changes in Neisseria that is able to protect the bacteria from being killed from the immune system. And this small RNA is the one that controls the capsule production. Det Edmund och hans forskargrupp nu gör är att kartlägga så många RNA-typer som möjligt. Och trots alla upptäckter återstår fortfarande flera frågetecken. So we are basically now uh, touching just the tip of the iceberg. So we still do not know the whole map of small RNAs, what stress factors are triggering these uh, small RNAs and what are they doing. So the easy thing to say is that it's very easy to find small RNAs. But to find out what these small RNAs are doing, that is the most challenging uh, question. Utrustningen forskarna använder idag liknar i allt väsentligt den som användes redan på 70-talet när Edmund fick sitt första mikroskop. Nyfikenheten är den samma som då, men kunskapen är betydligt större. Och Edmund har en tydlig idé om hur hans forskning ska kunna bekämpa bakterien i praktiken. We could actually design drugs that is able to hopefully bind to these small RNAs to block them so that they do not express whatever proteins there are or factors that they are supposed to be producing. Therefore it cannot produce the capsule and therefore it cannot cause hopefully cannot cause disease.